It's time for another episode of the Josh Cast. I was inspired because I was listening to um, I was listening to this old radio show, like nineteen fifties science fiction radio theater and uh, I, uh, I it was Vincent Price and Peter Cushing were the stars and they're these two scientists who are investigating uh, like a body snatching situation and the way just the way that it was done it was uh, very very ni- very inspiring so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a version of that right now 1950s sci-fi theater and the show is going to be Aliens from Kind of Far Away. <laughs> ah, it's so good to see you again. John Jackson, temporary secretary to me. Yeah, it's it's, uh, day two of temping. Thank you. I don't know why you have to announce my name. Because the audience cannot see... Oh, great, you're going to break the fourth wall. We're two lines into this and you're... uh, All right, fine. Fine, break the fourth wall. uh, what's, What's on the agenda for today? What filing would you like me to do today? We're going to be investigating a very strange phenomenon that's been occurring. There have been stories out at the old mill, sightings of creatures who cannot be explained. I'm, pro- I'm sure they can be explained. I'm pretty sure. I guess I'm going to be the scully in this situation, as that's what's happening. What is this scully you speak of here in 1950s Connecticut? Sorry, now this time it was me that broke the fourth wall. All right, uh, well, what's what's the plan, Dr. Stevens? Yes, I am Dr. Stevens. Am I Dr. Stevens? I can't remember what you called yourself at the beginning of this. Well, then we'll go with Dr. Stevens for now. Glad we're not scripting this. All right, yes, what's the plan, Dr. Stevens? A plan. As we shall go. To this old mill. And we shall talk to the owner and see if we might discover what mysterious happenings are happening. Okay, that's that's good. Um, are we going to take two cars? We don't have to take two cars. We can carpool. Well, I mean, I just, I was probably going to, I mean, where are you going afterwards? Oh, I was going to come back to the office. Yeah, I, I, I have plans afterwards. Oh, really? What plans? I was, you know, going to just hit a, hit some mics. Hit? Hit mic? What? I don't understand what that... I, I'm, I'm trying to be a, a comedian. Ah! Ah! A stand-up comedian. That is, your, that is your aim in life, isn't it? Yeah, sure, sure, yes, it is. Tell me a joke. I, I, I think you're, you're helping me to write one, but uh, I can't. I really can't do it on cue. Ah! You're going to have a lot of trouble then. Comedians need to be funny at any point, at all times. Slap chop! Yes, slap chop. Slap chop. Uh, but we should, we should take separate cars. Later that night, Dr. Stevens, and probably his name is Tim, show up at the old mill and speak to the owner. Mr. Stebbins. I understand you've owned this old mill for quite a long time. Uh, Yes, I've I've owned the old mill for mm, nigh on two days. Doesn't, uh, 
doesn't really seem like a long time. Oh, it is when you take into account the black hole. Oh, okay, here we go. That was fast. Black hole, you say? Oh, yes. You see, the mill is inside a black hole. Time operates differently. To you, I, I may seem to be a man of 25, but in reality, I am much, much older. Boy, if you are, then uh, back in the day, that 25 used to be a, a harder 25. Why would you say such a thing out loud? I, Because uh, it's a radio show. Hey! You're the one who's complaining about breaking the fourth wall. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. All right, let's continue with this, please. Um, or not, we could end it. We're going to continue, aren't we? Uh, at any point when I bought the old mill, I was but a wee lad. And I soon discovered that there were creatures here. Bizarre, fantastic creatures. And after we made sweet love, the creatures explained to me what their mission was going to be. He said after they make sweet love, correct? Yes, that is what he said. I am going to be tasteful and not go back and ask him about it. That's a private matter, not something that should be discussed here in the 1950s. Yeah, but I mean, isn't there a party that wants to kind of know what's the, you know, the details? Of course! But we are gentlemen. Well, you're a gentleman. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, I would rather not be a gentleman. I'd rather ask. You're not going to ask him what it was like to make sweet love to the aliens. There's a bigger problem here. There's a black hole in this old mill that might actually not be that old. You know, I hate to bring this up, but I think we might have it reversed in terms of the science of, this, of, this, of what's going on. That's enough out of you. Sir, we would like to meet these strange and fantastic creatures. Could you arrange that? Uh, I suppose I could, but, but they're quite dangerous. They don't like everybody. I've seen them murder. I've seen them murder. They, they don't have any sense of morality. They don't cherish life. Yeah, well, we're a bunch of 1950s white people. I think we're in the, you know, I think we'll be on the same page. That's enough social commentary out of you. Uh, all right. And so, the old man leads Dr. Stevens, and probably his name is Tim, into the mill. I'm going to warn you, there's going to be some gravitational distortion. <laughs> You guys all right? Yeah, I didn't feel anything. I just heard you make those weird noises. Is that the distortion you're talking about? Yes, it is. I, I just... I wanted it to be more interesting than it actually is, so I'm trying to doll it up a bit. Yeah, okay, well, nicely done. That right there, you see that creature? Looks like an end table. Yes, looks can be deceiving. That is the head alien. His name is Dr. Stevens. What? He has the same name as I, Dr. Stevens? Oh my god. You serious? His name is, his, his name is Dr. Stevens. His name is Dr. Stevens, we've got our own Dr. Stevens, and this is a radio show? Are you kidding me? I, I, don't, I don't understand why you're getting upset with me. As you told me his name, his name was Dr. Stevens, and I'm telling you his name now. I, would, I, what more do you want from me? All right, just so we don't confuse everybody, moving forward, Dr. Stevens, you should be, we should call you by your first name. What is your first name? Alistair. 
Of course it would be Alistair. All right, and what's the alien's first name? You're going to yell at me, aren't you? You're telling me the alien's first name is Alistair. Yeah, y- yes. Ha! I, I mean, it doesn't even make sense that the alien's name would be Alistair Stevens. Perhaps that's the name he chose? No, no, he was, he was born with it. How could he... Be- you're telling me that uh, what the alien that is, lo- is an end table. It is an end table. With, on an alien planet, entirely different culture, entirely different species, somehow speaks English, and somehow, like, is it literally spilled, spelled exactly the same? I, 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 I'm sorry, don't yell at me. I, I, I'm just, I, he, that's his name. Okay, so we're, we're moving forward. We're going to call you Human Stevens, and we're going to call him Alien Stevens. Okay? Just so we're all clear. Just so everybody's clear. Kind of derogatory. Just, just, it's not meant to be derogatory. Fine. Human Stevens, extraterrestrial Stevens. Is everybody happy? E.T. Stevens. Can we do E.T. Stevens just to make it a little bit easier? All right. It'll do. Yeah, it will do. <sighs> All right. So, um, human Stevens, why don't you begin? Yes, of course. It was really odd that you got that upset. I don't see why two people's the same. Let's just move on. Move on. All right. Mr. E.T. Stevens, we've come to know what your intentions are on this planet. Are you here for good, or are you here for evil? What is your goal here? Well, if I had to put it in words, our goal is to colonize the planet Earth and to feed off of human beings. But gradually, we would only kill the ones who are almost dead. And in exchange, we offer you a utopian society. We will give you the answers to all of the questions that you have. Imagine if every human being could get what they wanted. Take you, whose name is probably Tim. You want to be a comedian. We have the ability to give you the career that you would always wanted. With the snap of a finger, all we ask in return is peaceful coexistence. That's interesting. Uh, human, Dr. Stevens, can I talk to you for a second over at the corner? Yeah. So, you, c- clearly he's a villain, right? We got that from the voice and from what he's saying and eating people. Clearly, we're, you and I are on the same page here. Ah, yes, of course. I can see right through his dastardly scheme. Don't you worry. We will entrap him. We will save the planet in the process. What do you mean entrap him? Why? What I mean is, we will prove that he is, in fact, here for nefarious purposes. Using clever wordplay and catching him with verbal repartee. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's a nice plan. I like that, you know, there's, there's niceness to that plan. But there's going to come a point where he realizes that we're on to him and then you know, he might, I, I don't know, kill us. And at that, that's the part of the plan I'm interested to know. I, I'm interested to gauge your take on what we do at that part of the plan. <laughs> well, there will be no need. Obviously, he's a gentleman. Once he understands that we know, he will concede and the aliens will depart. Do you have uh, any idea, any, any idea what you're talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I... I'm a pretty good judge of character. No! 
You're not. You're not a good judge. No, no, no. You don't. You don't assume that. Why? Why do you assume that he's a gentleman? A. He's an end table. B. We don't even know he's a he. Well, he pronounces his words quite well. Yes, he pronounces his words quite. You're 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 trusting somebody who pronounces their words quite well. Are you? Uh, do, do you not? Have you read any history? Do you? You know, I'm not sure which of the two of you has been on earth longer at this point. Can I take the lead on this? I'm going to take the lead on this. Let's just leave right now and call the cops. That's the best thing we can do. Just be polite, say thank you very much, leave right now, call the cops. No, 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 no. We must confront him. You must face your fears. I don't want to face my fears. I'm a, I, 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 I don't. I'm happy with my fears. I'm happy running from my fears. My fears belong behind me in the rear view mirror. I don't even have a rear view mirror. That's how much I'm running from my fears. Okay? Relax. Whose name is probably Tim. Relax, probably Tim. Relax. I will handle this. E.T. Stevens. We see through your lies. We see your diabolical plan. We know that you do not seek peaceful coexistence. You are here to conquer us. And you must understand that I am Dr. Alistair Stevens, not someone to be trifled with. I've dealt with your kind before, and they have not lived to tell the tale. <laughs> Did, uh, I'm going to go ahead and interpret there that that uh, E.T. Stevens just, is it vaporized? Is that the right word? Vaporized the uh, human Stevens. Is that what, is, is that what happens? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened. I, I, I warned you. I warned you. These aliens, they have no concept of good or evil. Or if they do, it's just evil. I wouldn't. Wouldn't upset him. No, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, in fact, listen. Uh, E.T. Stevens, uh, if, uh, you know, if you need someone to handle spreadsheets, do some light accounting, I'm here for you. That's very kind of you. We have some filing for you to do right now. Why don't you see to it that it's done? want you to file the names in alphabetical order of all the people we're going to vaporize. It's a lot of files. All right. Ah, yeah, I'll get right on that. I'll get right on that. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a happy ending to that radio show. It's not a happy ending. He becomes a slave, and the hum- the aliens conquer the humans. That's the end. That's the end, because that's how life works. You wanted a happy ending. You wanted them to defeat everyone. That's not what happens. One clear, decisive victory. That's, that's what it is. Podcast is nearly coming to an end. I um, feel like I should end it with some kind of a a statement of some kind, or, a, you know, a thought. Thinking a lot about shoes lately. Let's talk about shoes. I really, it, you know, shoes are the reason why I don't have as many friends as I used to, and why I don't cultivate them. Because all when I was growing up, I, I'd get comments on my shoes. You're not wearing the right shoes. For a long time, I wore black Reebok shoes, and people were telling me those are not fashionable, they don't look right, and you know what? I would rather be comfortable. If you have an opinion about my shoes, then you keep that opinion to yourself. Please, 
Keep it to yourself. I'm not interested in your opinion about shoes, but it will make you look more attractive. Why would I want to do that? It's not going to make me look more attractive. I don't buy that. Well, we would have cast Chris Hemsworth as the attractive romantic lead in this movie, but he was wearing those Reebok shoes, and ah, that just, it's not going to work. It just, it, uh, we, we just, we couldn't. We had, we had to reject him. We had to reject him. So we had, we're going with, we're going with Brad Pitt. What, do you, what can you do? What can you do? Brad Pitt knows, you know, he has the correct shoes. I mean, he, he, surely they, they were told we're only shooting it from, you know, the knees down. Surely they were told this. You're not prepared in auditions. You're not prepared in auditions. What can I tell you? What can I tell you?